Hello guys, this is Rosos. Today I'm going to talk about paring knives or skiving knives. So uh, in this video I'm going to talk a lot. Um, I'm going to also demonstrate some of the te techniques and uh, some of the um, um, uh, uses how to use a skive knife or paring knives. Uh, some of them are not really necessary. I'm just, um, I'm just too greedy with the tools. And uh, some of them are quite useful in terms of uh, certain techniques. And um, in this video, I'm just going to talk a lot mostly, um, like always, but uh, I would like to cover as much as possible so that you can, uh, you can see what's going on in the skiving or paring knife world and what you need to know and what kind of things that you should look for when you want to buy good quality knives. So uh, from the left to the right, I'll just talk one by one. A, uh, one of my good friends um, called Philip in UK, he really told me this idea that um, I should also cover this uh, uh, round knife because there are a lot of people who, who does a lot of um, pairing or skyping with the, with the round knife too. I completely forgot about it because I don't do it. Yeah, that's right. Um, Philip, um, he's right. Uh, especially in the saddle world, um, in saddlery, um, you do a lot of skyping as well. Um, it's a really versatile tool actually. That's why um, round knife was very popular among um, old um, craftsmen and uh, also saddle works. You can cut, you can scribe, also you can make st uh, strips, uh, long strips of leather. Uh, it's a highly, highly useful tool. But for me, personally, I rarely use this type of traditional knives. I usually collect them. Um, my purpose of using this tool is more, more of a purpose or um, purpose of um, collecting or I would like to just um, have it as a conversational piece. And now one day I would like to um, put it on a wall, um, on a wall of um, all the round knives and antique knives that I have. I did also make some of the round knives and um, and also those one of those um, like a hook blade style knives as well. But then when it comes to skiving and pairing, I would like to keep this um, round knife away because uh, this round shape makes it really difficult to make precision cut or straight cuts that I love to do. So um, when it comes to pairing and skiving, I'll just leave this round knives um, out of the topic. So if you are doing it, that's good for you, but uh, I don't do it. So uh, if you're looking for specific knife for pairing uh, or for fine leather working, you know, you shouldn't really consider a round knife in your, in your list because it's not really, um, it's not really relevant, I think, that's my opinion. And also, uh, I'd like to really uh, talk about the terminology as well, scabbing and pairing. Pairing is, whoops, sorry. Pairing is uh, such an interesting word that uh, you pair leather, which means you s peel off the skin surface of the leather, which is a correct terminology. But uh, I think in Western world, yeah, it is uh, Western world. You use you should use the word skiving more often, and that's that's what people know as skiving. And uh, interestingly, in in uh, in Asia, people call it paring knife. Especially in South Korea, we people call it paring knives. Uh, but uh, why? I think the correct terminology is a skiving knife in this uh, in this technique. It's a skiving knife. And uh, I should also correct myself often. But in this video, if I say wrong, if I say pairing knives, I mean skiving knives. So yeah, bear in, bear in, my, in mind that uh, I keep mixing up um, if I two words, yeah? So anyways, yeah, so this one, next one, this is Tartamate um, version. I think this is more like version two. The one had the other logo. I don't have it. This is version two, I think, uh, when he now really start to sell them. Um, professionally, I, I do have their um, uh, quite early version. It's a great knife. Um, the edge holding is very good. Uh, it has a really interesting grind here. It's, it takes a very thin edge from thick steel into very fine edge and has a good bevel. I sharpened them um, by um, Japanese water stones, uh, really good Chosera water stones, so they are scary, scary sharp. They are really sharp. I'm going to talk about sharpness also. I'm going to show you sharpness testing, how it should um, keep it sharp. Anyways, this is Chowdermate knives. This is really good knives. You do need this for certain, certain technique. Um, you can use other knives as well, but this knife will bring you better results, I guarantee. Yeah. People talk, say this knife um, a lot, 
Uh, people call it, a lot of people call it Japanese scarving knife. I have to tell you guys, uh, this is not a scarving knife in the beginning of the, using the leather knife, uh, for Japanese leather knife. Uh, people use it for scarving, I know. But then, uh, and I don't know why, um, ja people got it really messed up with their name for their tools. Um, I also do that too. But then, this is not a scarving knife, this is Japanese leather knife. That's it. Yeah? And this is left-handed version. If you are holding it in your hand, if something is not right, you know, you, because your yours going to be look like this, and then your blades are going to protrude in this way. That's that's because you're right-handed. This one's a left-handed version. This is um, this is very what what is it called? Um, very basic, very start um, level of Japanese leather knife. They still produce these, but then um, price got really high recently. But I still recommend this. I'll put the link in the description box where all the tools I recommend uh, in the Amazon link. Uh, this this uses a white steel, so it has a white steel, quite hard. It gets scary sharp. But then the main purpose of using this knife is just cut leather. That's the main purpose. You can sky with it. But then the problem with this type of Japanese leather knife, when this knife gets uh, shorter, you get to ha lose your angle uh, where you touch your surface. So. If you're um, touching your leather like this, yeah, as you wear your blade down, now your angle gets higher because this distance gets shorter. So that's the only downside for using it multi-purposely. This is a great leather cutting knife. I use this a lot. The handle why this is a bit brownish and also look uh, lacquered is that this is Japanese Urushi. So I did myself uh, this Urushi style <laughs> handle. I did it myself. Uh, normally it uh, comes with uh, just a whole wood, a normal Japanese um, wood, but I did it um, this Japanese la lacquer Urushi. So uh, back then uh, when I started in the middle of I don't know, around 2013, I really got deeply into this um, Japanese Urushi thing. This is Blanchard uh, old, and I also did Urushi. Oh, so this lacquering finish, it's not great, it's not perfect, <laughs> I know, but then uh, it's a quite unique finish. It's a very durable finish. It's uh, one of the, the, the oldest technique that preserves wood almost infinitely. So I don't know why I wanted to do it, but I think it was more like a practice piece for me. But then it turned out quite good. Uh, it turned out uh, brownish, which I really um, intended. So anyways, yeah, this is Japanese leather knife. Yeah, that's it. So this is, this is, oh yeah, by the way, these two knives have this edge on one side, this has a bevel on one side, and if you flip it, it's a very flat, yeah, so it's a chisel grind, in Western world you call it chisel grind, no, but uh, I don't know, if you guys really like this type of um, sharpening, for me I like this sharpening, but some people prefer both sides sharpening. Um, it's another big topic, but in my opinion, for skiving knife, guys, for skiving, this type of single bladed side, one side bevel, one side flat, I prefer much, much, much this way because it gets much sharper, because it's easier to sharpen, and it's just, uh, it's just what I really prepare and what I've been doing for many years. So uh, if you're making knives or if you're buying knives, try to look for um, one side flat and one side ground. Yeah? But this one I tried to speak about, we'll talk about was that this one is different. This one has a two bevel on both sides, like this. So uh, it's, a, it's a quite, it's a different than these ones. But then uh, this blade is super hard and has a very shallow angle to it. So on both sides, in both ways, it has a very shallow angle. So it's quite sharp now. The one you use is your left up lever and then you just throw out your blade as much as you like to use and then you close it and there is a actually a type of pin there which corresponds to this type of single um, type of gaps here yeah and then it matches you have to adjust to match this um, yeah if it matches it clicks and then it just holds the blade it's a very fascinating old technique mechanism uh, this is this is I think this is invention of some company. I'm not sure who patented this design, but this is a really old knife. It's antique, as you can see. A um, lot of company uses um, this type of um, locking mechanism. I think um, this one is more of a really old uh, war era uh, type of um, 
military um, tool lot, I think. Looking at the spheral is being steel. I think this came from World War era because back then brass was really uh, in the need of you making bullets. So even bullets were, uh, bullet shells were also made of steel too. So if you have a knife that has a ferrule made of steel, it's more likely that your knives are coming from war era because the brass material was very scarce back then. You know? Anyways, this could be your fairing knife too, but then I don't really recommend it, but you could use as a pairing knife. It's okay. Now, so to shorten it again, I mostly use it for fine cutting job. Now, so next one. So these, this is, this is what I made. So from here to there, yeah. So this, what, six knives, they're all made by me. So it's self-made. Um, I have made a lot of knives. And uh, it's, it's, for me, my hobby, is my passion is knife and also leather. So it's a perfect match for, for um, craft. But then I tend to really keep going to one hobby to another. It's keep leather and knife and back and forth. I really need to really stop one hobby just to focus on one hobby. But then anyways, this, this knife is a, the one that I always wanted to create by myself because there aren't any product like that, um, that which I really prefer and what I like. This is High Speed Steel M2. Uh, I sourced the steel really, really um, difficult because they don't have any stock that is narrow and also this thick. And it was very difficult. And one of really good um, a supply of mine uh, had to find this, st uh, this steel for me. I was very thankful. Uh, it was um, it was very it was very nice to look this um, specific size for me, and I did um, had to find a company that can cut into this type of uh, way and drill a hole here and also heat treat it the best way it could be possibly done. Uh, this knife is a, such a hard hard steel that you can cut and cut and cut. Uh, the only downside of using this type of uh, kiridashi. I say kiridashi because there are also M2 steel still um, out here, but then this knife specifically, what's difficult is, you see how many spaces are there, the surface area there from here to here, it's a huge, huge area, you know? So in order to sharpen this area, you need to grind, when, you, when you're shopping on sharpening stone, you need to grind the whole this area to get to, get the fine, to, get to the fine edge. You know? So you require really good uh, sharpening stone as well. Uh, on the back side as well, it's just a uh, solid steel, so it's a full, full flat. So you need to you need to um, sharpen it um, uh, very well. Yeah, if you keep it sharp, you can can um, keep up with the sharpness. This Kiridashi, knife, Kiridashi style knife isn't bad. Yeah, but for you guys, if you are just have to buy a Kiridashi style knife, you could you could buy Kiridashi's knife for your leather skiving, but be careful. Do not buy the short ones. I, I know that Kiridashi knives are, they are not always long. I see Kiridashi knives are very small too, very short, I mean. And the one um, also wider as well, one long as well. If you're trying to look for a Kiridashi knife, yeah, try to find a long one because you need to be able to hold it and you need to put it at a lower angle as much as possible if some certain cases, yeah. So, if you're having too short kiridashi, you can't really hold it uh, in your hand and use it because it's it's uh, the angle is not really um, convenient for you if, if you're doing with the leather craft. So kiridashi knife, like this knife I told you guys, these two are okay, I think. Um, if not, just trying to go better option. Yeah? But if you already have it, if you want to use it, it's okay. Yeah? This knife. Uh, this knife is not really sharpened though. It's in the way of sharpening it uh, because it's newly made. Uh, I have lost mine. Uh, I had a similar knife like this, but I lost one. So I have to just make one. Uh, this is a simple carbon steel and uh, it has a grind on both sides. This is more like a cobbler type, shoe type of um, uh, pairing knife. I use it mo mostly um, doing the rough cutting jobs or just the big cutting jobs. And uh, I didn't really use it for skiving. Uh, for if you're a shoemaker, you might need to use this knife. But this one is straight model. This is it's not a curved model uh, like the one used uh, use it for uh, staying down the sole area. This is just a straight one. This is more like a just a um, 
very roughly um, workhorse type of um, shop knife. Uh, the problem with this type of shoe knife is that if you have this type of a round angle like this, yeah, if you have a round edge like this, just like the the round knife that I showed you guys, uh, it has a round edge. It's also difficult to get that fine straight line and you get the clean cut. So if you have a round edge like this, you, you might have to um, really um, learn your technique how to do it right because you can also do it straight and then cut. You can do it like that too, but then, mm, I don't know, it's just for me, it's not for me. Um, just want to show you example that if you have one, you could try, but then I don't recommend it. Um, this knife, uh, you could try, but then I don't recommend it. Yeah, that's my conclusion. I will not to talk too long about it, too much in each knives. So let's talk all of these four together. So yeah, so uh, like I said again, these are all made by me. You can't really buy this um, at the moment. Maybe in the future I will try to produce them in a mass uh, production way and try to sell them. Uh, what you really see difference in between these four is that the width is all different, right? The width is all different. So I can just um, show you them like a consecutive manner. Yeah, so like this. Narrow, wider, wider, widest. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, if it's, the, if it's wide, you can get that wide section cut away really simply and it's the the work is much cleaner if it's on white. So, uh, of course, I'm going to show you demonstration, so don't worry, but I will just explain it uh, in words first. If you're trying to really sky very long section, with very small knife, you have to cut, 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 very long like this, you you, you should, you just, it's just unavoidable to just leave those marks and each section because it's very short. Now, in that kind of long section, it's just better to use a wide knife at once or two times or three times. Yeah. It's much, much better to have a wider knife in that case. Yeah. Why is it handy for the sh narrow ones? Is that when your section is just only partial that you just only want to take out that small portion and you want to take out that um, uh, only that area with a narrow knife and you can do that. But if you have a too, too wide knife, now it's impossible because you have to only scribe, you only want to scribe this type of section, but your knife is touching on both sides. And it's really difficult to really nail that down because it's too wide, yeah? So narrow one, just easy to really go very partial, yeah? Very concentration of a spot where you want to scribe, yeah? This one is good for long lengths, yeah? Less work and also cleaner work for the wider one, yeah? So these two, uh, these two are more of a, um, how I say, um, common type. So the idealistic, idealistic width of this paring knife, it's, this is 30 millimeter one, this is 38 millimeter one, which is a very fine, fine area of, of a choosing your paring knife. This one is slightly too, too wide, to be honest, but then it's good to have. No, that's why I prefer, I actually like the look of it also, and I also prefer to use the, the widest one, actually. But then if you're looking for one knife that is specifically for use of the skiving, choose between 30 to 40 millimeter ones. Yeah, those are the idealistic width of the of the pairing knives, or skiving knives, yeah. So the other two, two other things are different. Um, the angle of the blade, I mean, this angle, yeah, so this one is like that, this one is like that, this one is like this, and this one is also a bit like that. So, conclusion, um, it's not badly important, but then it's a, it's a really your preference and how your hands react to certain angles. So, I am more of a person that don't want to turn my hand too much when I Skype. So what I mean is that if this angle is like this, I can just turn my hand like this to match this flat area. Yeah, so I don't have to turn it as much. This one as well. So in order to just get that edge to the straight spot, I just need to turn it like this and then boom. Yeah, this one as well. So like this. Yeah. Now this type of one, you gotta have to like turn your blade a bit too much like that and then boom yeah 
So it's all about turning also, and also how how you want to really um, how you want to would you like to do the scabbing work? It's kind of difficult to explain in words, but then as the flat it gets, as you get to the um, work section, you can you can as you push, you get to really have a benefit of slide cutting rather than the straight cutting. So you have an angle, good enough angle, you get to benefit this um, this sliding motion of your blade because as your blade pushes forward, your your action of your knife gets tried to cut from this side to this side. I will explain in a <laughs> demonstration. You know, this this might doesn't make sense in words. But anyways, angle is not deadly, but I say um, a bit like this or like this is good, but not more than this. Uh, I'm not sure degree of this, but then uh, if you have a um, feeling of how, how um, acute they are, it shouldn't be that kind of too much of acute, you know what I mean? It's too much of a sharp angle makes you now you turn your head hand like too much and then also the area of sharpening now gets larger and larger. So if I compare these both two, it's almost, uh, this one is now almost the same uh, because this is wider, this is narrower, but then this has a low angle, this has a high angle, but then now the sharpening surface is similar. What happens is if you make it even lower angle like this, now your sh sharpening surfaces gets higher, it's difficult to sharpen. So uh, in terms of sharpening, you get to have a problem there. So lastly, lastly, uh, it's about the steel, uh, including all of the, all of the steels here, yeah, including all of the steels that I talked about. So the differences are lastly, it's about the steel. So my conclusion just tells me that uh, if you have a really good stainless steel, yeah, if you have a really good stainless steel, it's okay. So really good stainless steel means CPM 154, um, RWL 34, which is, this one is RWL 34. This is a Swedish powder stainless steel. It's a high-end uh, stainless steel. Those type of high quality stainless steels, those are good. Um, you can use it, you can buy it, you can make it. High quality stainless steels are awesome. Yeah, I really like them. Other than that, if you're having low quality stainless steel, throw, the, throw that away option, throw that uh, option away. Try to go for high carbon steel. Now high carbon steel always brings a decent result rather than cheap stainless steel or really awful stainless steel. Um, how to really distinguish between good stainless steel and bad stainless steel is that if you have your knives only marked as a stainless or stainless steel, the chances are very high that your steels are really not that good. Because high quality stainless steels, makers would like to put that the name. This is uh, AEBL, this is CPM 154, this is RWL 34. Those are the listings that I said just said it's really good stainless steel and they the makers would definitely would like to tell customer that this is high quality steel stainless steel yeah if it's only says stainless yeah stamped or written it's stainless it means it's poor quality stainless don't buy them yeah rather go for high carbon steel and those are better than that kind of uh, cheap stainless steel now um, what if it's a high carbon stainless steel that's a good question it is better than just stainless, but high carbon stainless steel is also not good enough information about the steel, and chances are still high that that stainless steel is not good enough. Yeah, so in choosing your steel, go for high carbon or stainless, high quality stainless steel. Now, uh, for example, yeah, sorry, I forgot also this N690 is a really good high carbon, um, high carbon uh, stainless steel also. Uh, this is uh, more like a VG10 too. Uh, it's a really good quality uh, stainless. I like this um, edge caping um, capable or holding capability and also um, how they really withstand the humid. I know a lot of makers are all over the world. Sometimes they're in humid, humid environment. They do need that stainless. Otherwise their, their tools get super rusty, you know. Uh, that way um, stainless steel is a, can be a good option. Now, 
if you are lucky enough to get hold of um, really high quality M2 steel, M2 steel is a really still good option. It holds an edge really good. It gets super, super sharp. But then uh, if you need to sharpen it, it can be a problem uh, if you don't have any um, certain type of um, really good um, sharpening tools. So uh, I'd like to really um, tell you that uh, tool steels are good. D2, um, O1, A2 is all good, and M2 is also good, but then you need to you need to able to learn how to really sharpen it, scary, scary sharp, because that's the step one to have a good skyving. So uh, next section, I would like to really show you um, how sharp it should be before you even start to practice or before even you start to work on your project, uh, how sharp your um, knife should be, and then that's where you, uh, where you start. So um, if you are really frustrated with your skiving or paring knife, um, you should really sharpen your knives really well first. That's the, actually the first step. Um, I know I know one, one friend of mine that used to work in this atelier or the, one of those um, French workshops that told me that um, they don't really sharpen that fine degree. They really sharpen it very rough, very toothy edge and then they just drop it and then just go, which is a very good topic to talk about. And um, next section will be all about just practicing and also showing um, while, how um, skiving should be and what kind of things that you should do with a skiving knife and all these things. So uh, yeah, so sharpening is also a big tema, but let's not talk about sharpening too much uh, in next session. I will just show you, demonstrate um, how it, the skiving should be and etc. and etc. Yeah, so the video has been already too long. I'll jump to the next session.